Hello and welcome to the second episode of Loose Knots Reviews. Today, I'll be reviewing one of the triplets from the Peugeot Citroen Toyota Love Triangle, the Peugeot 107. The 107, developed as part of the B0 project between PSA and Toyota, which let's be honest sounds a hell of a lot cooler than the car it eventually produced, was Peugeot's shot to produce the best super mini of the noughties and replace the much loved but aging Peugeot 106. And the result, a super mini that, with its small pug-like looks, does seem a bit out of place here in the countryside, doesn't it? But this car wasn't really designed for here. It was designed for here. Welcome to the city, a place where environmentalism, emissions charges, and insurance premiums rule the day. This place is feared by older, larger engine cars, but it's exactly where the three-cylinder 107 comes into its own. Costing just £30 a year to tax, the equivalent of just 82p a day, you can get this whole car for less than the cost of a single bus ticket. It's a pretty good value if you ask me. Economy-wise, the Super Mini is very polar bear friendly, and according to stats, delivers a quite respectable 62.7 miles to the gallon. And to complete the requirements for a city car, the Peugeot also passes the largest test for new drivers. Being within insurance bracket 3 means that even a baby-faced 17-year-old, fresh out of their driving test and working in hospitality, would be able to afford to tax, run and insure the 107. As with all cars, trade-offs do have to be made. And the largest trade-off, or should I say the smallest trade-off for the Peugeot, is the boot. Let's do a weekly shop and see how the car handles it. Of course, other products, brands and shops are also available. Nope. 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 Yes. Now that's done and the sun's setting, let's see if we can fit this lot in there. Doesn't exactly close, but fair play, Peugeot. Maybe it's not as good as I thought. So there you go. You can hold the weekly shopping in the back, but only if you don't mind picking it all up when you get home. So I'd say the boot is just ever so slightly more useful than a chocolate teapot. Peugeot were very generous with their wide choices of engines that came with the 107. In this model, for example, you get the one litre Toyota designed three cylinder lump producing 68 horsepower. And well, that's it actually. The Citroen and the Toyota respectively came with a 1.4 litre engine designed in France, but Peugeot, in their infinite wisdom, decided not to. I can only assume that they sat in their boardroom and said, what the heck, people are only driving one car, why do they need more than one engine? But isn't it a cracker? To be honest, I was quite surprised by the engine. It seems very eager, but sadly underpowered, a bit like a puppy on a lead trying to drag its owner towards a unique smell. Once up to speed, it does hold its own well. However, the road noise is pretty severe, and at 60 or 70, it's quite unbearable. Have a listen to some footage that I kind of ruined by recording on the dual carriageway. Speaking of, being Toyota inside means the engine will probably outlast the rest of the car. Credit where credit's due though, for a small car, it's extremely spacious inside, thanks in part to this recessed dash. The colours, textures and plastic quality are good. Not exactly premium, but not as cheap as I'd expect for a car costing only £10,000. The radio holds up okay for its age, however it definitely came spec for teenagers of the day with its old 3.5mm headphone jack. They obviously didn't foresee that Apple would ruin this feature just eight years after the car's initial release. The centre console also has an orange back glow when it gets dark, which is pretty funky. With the driver's chair pushed back to accommodate someone of my height, it's clear that no adult should have to sit in the back of this car. Hey, come take a look. I'm also hitting my head on the roof. While researching for this video, 
I had a look on Persia's website and found their list of supposed extras that come with this top of the range Verve model. The features include cloth seats, which, although are very nice, aren't exactly a premium feature, remote central locking, air conditioning, electric windows, and five doors. Much of a Peugeot's life will look like this, pottering around at 20 or 30. So let's see if we can help this car explore its power band a bit more and see if we can improve upon the claimed 0-60 of 13.7 seconds. That's um, slightly embarrassing. Despite that awful defeat, we do have to answer the question, how does the Peugeot stand up against its rivals and can it really be considered a successful replacement for the 106? Well on the plus side you got its price, it was really a bargain basement car when new and to be honest they do hold their value pretty well nowadays. Secondly, you've got a strong Toyota built engine which can reportedly reach over 150,000 miles before uh, kablooing. Being quite a simple car, there's not much to go wrong. There's minimal electronics, and to be honest, with a basic knowledge of the car, you could probably repair quite a lot of it. And finally, you do get a very good MPG, and it does handle like a go-kart, thanks to its wheels being so far into the corners. But on the flip side, as I've shown, it's quite unrefined, and has very poor noise deadening. It also has a smaller boot than most sports cars. And my personal issue, it's quite underpowered, and this is particularly prevalent when you're driving on the motorway or you need to accelerate to escape a threat. Overall, I'd recommend the car for beginners or if you're not really planning on leaving a built-up area. I couldn't really recommend it if you're thinking of spending a large amount of time on the motorway however as the unrefinement does just drone on a bit. And on that basis, I would give it a 5 out of 10. What I would say about the car is that it's everything you need in a city car but literally nothing else. All I've got left to say is thank you for stopping by and see you around the bend on the next episode of Loose Nuts.